it's something I'm always thinking about is the like, when you sort of like combine elements of yourself, right? Because the sex worker persona, I also like, I'm like, a lot of this is me, but it's like the best parts of me. It's like when I have like all the time and energy and attention to like really show up and like really like embody this like sex goddess part of myself and Mm -hmm. I'm not concerned with like meal prep for the week or like caregiving responsibilities or like a fight that I just got in with a friend you know it's this um yeah just like the best parts you get to like really I feel like the the structure of sex work really allows me to like show up as my best self in a way when people who are like, oh, like I want to like really get to know you. Like, and I'm like, really, you want me to be a bitch to you in the morning? Like <laughs> you want me to make you cry before coffee and not in a sexy way. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And I feel like they don't really know what they're doing, but I, I, I think what I'm, trying to say is that like when you bring elements of other aspects of your life, whether it be like education or organizing, there is some of that crossover, which I think can like complicate it for some people. And I I guess I'm wondering how you like, how you navigate like having both of those like different identities on the same. I, I do it like everyone else. You just kind of stumble through it. I don't think enough about it to, to be like, should, you know, I, um, as I do this more and more, and as I get older and within sex work itself, I've been doing this for almost 20 years. So, um, I started off as a cam girl, like I was burned out of being in corporate, um, in a corporate job and I needed a, um, something to do at home. And it was just the dawn of like cams, camming rooms and stuff. Um, and basically it was like the dawn of the internet. Um, but back when there was this huge site, they recently just went down actually. Um, but they, it was this huge site called iFriends. And what they did was they would try and pretend like it was a dating site and they would be like, look at all these real women who are willing to talk to you and date you. And of course, you know, maybe one person went on there (laughs) to maybe date, but it was like, not real. It was really just like a, you know, that's, that's just the trap. That's, that's just like the, the pull, right. To get, um, men into the, the, the campsite anyway. So that's, that's how I started in sex work. And then certain quickly after that, um, people just started asking how to, how, how, how would you be willing to dominate me? And this was at a time when I really wasn't, I was really young, didn't, didn't understand what that really meant, but it was basically like, yeah, that sounds great. (laughs) That sounds fantastic. I can just tell you what to do. Um, so, so why did I go down that road? Um, you were asking how I, yeah. So you were asking how I, sorry, what did you say? I'm think I'm curious about like the evolution of your branding and like how to right. Do- so you were asking how I can kind I combine those things and, and now as I get older, so back then it was like, you know, um, it was really much less out of choice than just needed a way to make money. Um, after, after having been burnt out of like a corporate job and, um, and now as I've gotten older and more just smarter in the way they, that I do things and understanding much more about this industry, um, it's it's just developed more into like um more knowledgeable about all the things that i am interested in and trying to basically my you know trying to understand what it is that i like what it is that i want and m- match it up with people who also want those things and will are willing to pay me for those things whereas you know 
in the beginning, it was much more like, I'll do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. Like everything I'll, you know, um, let's try it out. Um, I did have boundaries, but you know, boundaries can be fudgeable. Um, when it comes to when it, if, um, and, and I'm sure like every, every woman understands this, which is like, which is like, you think that you won't do something and then you will willing, definitely willing to do something if you're paid extra or paid more, or you're desperate for, it, or you really need money to survive that month or, you know, things like that. Yeah. I feel like, like, I don't think it's talked about enough in consent is that boundaries shift based on your like needs and desires mm. at the moment. I, I think it's, it's interesting hearing you talk about like finding your like kind of like femdom tendrils within like the nexus of sex work. I definitely like, tr I feel like I have a very different experience than a lot of people because I found BDSM outside of sex work and then also had like the experience of being like, wow, I fucking hate working nine to five and like uh -huh. I'm so burnt out. And like, what if I did this professionally? I'm like, wow, it's so like so much easier to make money. Um, but I'm curious, like what it was like for you sort of like under the umbrella of sex work, like using that as a space to explore your interest in femdom. And like you were saying, like in the beginning, kind of like doing whatever, like, and like the evolution of figuring out like what worked for you. And I think there's something like very specific too about like having built a brand and like being at this point in our career where like, I, or at least I'll speak for myself where like, I feel like, like I can say no to the majority of things that come my, come my way. I like make decent money online. I feel like I have really good um, clients and submissives in my life and like not unlimited time. So I feel like I'm at a point where I can be very selective. And I feel like the more selective that I get, it's like also like a very, very privileged place to be in, but that the more selective mm -hmm. I get, it's the more I'm able to like fine tune specifically what yeah. it is that I'm into. And I'd love to hear you talk a little bit about like what that evolution was like for you finding your footing in femdom within. Yeah, I guess. the uh, Okay. So I have both, I mean, I'm, I'm both lifestyle and professional. I, I talk very little about my actual lifestyle of like interest in kink and BDSM and f the fetish world. And I, I have a real personal interest and love for, um, being a dominant. Um, and I used to be a switch. Um, so I, you know, have a, a real curiosity and, um, love for the, this kind of lifestyle on the personal side and, and on the professional side, I, I would like to be able to explore, um, as much as I do on the personal side, but I recognize the, the limitations there. And so professionally, the, the development, um, like through my brand and through the years I can see now is that, um, really what I've done is, is basically have, and this is actually also what I teach, um, which is, you know, you kind of, you gravitate towards things that you don't just, I really don't believe that you just pick things because they make money. It's, it's very, it's, it's both, but you know, especially when it comes to certain fetishes and certain kinks, um, I gravitated towards femdom, um, and, and for a good reason. And, and the reason was true, like personal interest and real, um, like understanding or, or trying to understand other people who are also interested in these fetishes and kinks. So, yeah, my, my development has been basically to, um, find the things that I'm interested in and, and, re and really, and then also fine tune, um, the skills that it takes to make those, um, those interests appealing to other people. Like, 
you know, where, where does the bulk majority of my income comes from professionally? It is um, content creation. It is, um, you know, I, I actually, I think I make more from interacting with people than I do from simply, you know, content creation, audio sales, clip sales, et cetera. And so um, my interest is connecting with people. So, and I always knew that, but um, being able to like put it into words, and that's actually where teaching came in, where it's like trying to exactly put into words what it is that I was doing, am doing, and how to organize those those thoughts to be able to then have an actual profession and like have a path. Um, so my entire like kind of arc of of branding of 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 you know development professionally has gone towards basically like what am I good at, what am I interested in, and how can I then make that into um, a, a sustainable profession. And those are really difficult questions to ask and answer um, because it's it's a lot of like digging into yourself, especially in this world, right? Because you have to, um, along the many things that we have to do to just kind of sustain a business and a life, there's then the additional like deeper thoughts of your your own boundaries, your own kinks and fetishes, what you are willing and not willing to do. And yeah, I, I mean, it's endlessly fascinating. I'm never bored. <laughs> it is never boring. <laughs> yeah. I do. Yeah. I feel like there's so much there of like, my brain was like making a math equation of like, what do you like? What are you into? Where does money factor into it to like formulate formulate the brand. And I definitely think there are things that like, I like notice myself being drawn to. I think like mommy stuff was definitely something totally. that kind of like evolved out of me. And then I was like, Oh, you know, like not as many people are doing mommy stuff as daddy stuff. And like seeing people's responses to it was just really, really interesting. I feel mm -hmm. like mommy stuff has exploded in like the last five years. Um, but specifically for people who aren't, um, like I wouldn't put in the MILF category. Like I feel mm, like yeah. very neat for me to be seeing like 19 year old doms calling themselves mommy. And I'm like, this is amazing. Like, because they like be calling themselves daddy. So yeah. why not too? Um, and just like figuring out what works for you and like really being able to dig deep. I also like really like the one-on-one -on -one connection. And I was, I did more in-person work before the pandemic. And when I shifted to more online work, I found it really hard because I'm like, I really mm -hmm. am interested in the one-on-one -on -one connection. And like, when I film clips, I do my best when I have a submissive who is filming them and I'm just like channeling them and speaking to them. Or if I'm just like thinking about like one individual person, but for me, BDSM is so much about connection. And I like, really have to like be like I am channeling and like doing a ritual to like manifest oh, like a specific nice. client to to film to film a clip because it's it's hard for me without the specific connection and I think it took me a while to then build those connections online at the start of the pandemic because I was doing so much primarily um in person before the before the pandemic. And it definitely, it's just like a, a whole shift. And I feel like you're talking about all of these, um, like the personal explorations in the development of a brand, but I feel like it's also then like being mediated by payment processors and shadow banning and like this yeah. whole like ecosystem that is trying to invisibilize us. So like, as you were talking, I wasn't sure when you're talking about like the complexities of like personally like figuring out like what you want to share and like what's to keep for yourself I I was also like I feel like there's this third factor which is like what can you even share what can you sell can you call yourself mommy or do you have to be step mommy like mm -hmm. can you sell this content or are you going to be debanked tomorrow and I feel like we were talking about this a little bit and maybe yeah. I feel like there's an interesting conversation to be had of both 
financial domination and like the erotic thrill of Findom being also maybe part of both of our brands. Now, now that mm-hmm. we're sitting here reflecting on our brands, mm-hmm. uh, as well as like this like ugly other side of it of like cool, but like will that payment processor be there tomorrow? Yeah. So there's, man, um, the complications of there's the, there's like a light and dark side of everything. Um, and, and the, I think one of the reasons why, so let's, let me go back to the first thing that you were saying about like, um, 19 year olds calling themselves MILS and like, what is the, (laughs) how does it work? (laughs) Um, uh, and then, okay, so I'll start, I'll start there, which is <clears throat> the, the level at which I can tell you work and I work is different than the way, the level at which a 19 year old MILF works. Um, they haven't figured out uh, a lot of things. I think they're just trying on hats. Um, and, and, and maybe, maybe it's something that they really like, you know, this, Con- the, this like concept of being mommy, especially at a really young age. Um, that is for them to figure out. And that is for me to judge when I, <laughs> when I watch when I look at and see <laughs> things that, that make me, I don't know. It doesn't exactly make me go ick. It just, it just, like you said, it's just an interesting thing to look at, you know, and, and, and see, but I know that um, I relate to mommy content or whatever it is, but I spe- we'll talk about mommy stuff now. I mean, I specifically relate to it because it is a personal fetish. I love it. Um, so I think you can kind of see it and understand it. And then, um, you know, and, and does that even connect or matter that I'm actually a mom? I'm not sure. Um, I, I kind of think for you, what's that? Has it changed anything for you? Um, I think very little professionally, um, personally, absolutely. I mean, my entire life life is slave to this little (laughs) creature, right? Like it's not, (laughs) um, um, the, the, I'm like such a submissive to my, to my, little creature and it's uncomfortable. Right. Um, but that's, you know, sorry, there's, there's something very interesting to like the realities of motherhood. Oh yeah. The like fetishization of the maternal archetype, because I do think that there is like, like you're talking about like this, like submissive catering role that I then think is, there's like almost like impossible expectations put on a mother, but you can like play with it in this fantasy space where Mm -hmm. it like, it is contained, like the demands end eventually. And you can like play with some of like the erotic components of, of care, but it is very different than what the experience of a mother yeah, I guess as you were saying that, I'm also kind of thinking about the, oh, the, um, as I, you know, as a parent, then I, when I'm in the, in my personal life, it's very easy to see when a child is trying to manipulate you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so transparent and hilarious, uh, and, and kind of, um, both endearing and, you know, it's, it's so it's very complicated and, and like how I deal with something like a very small, innocent person <laughs> trying to manipulate you to get you get what they want. And so then kind of processing that and, and then taking taking that into the into my fetish um, grown up realm of um deciding what to do when someone tries to manipulate me or vice versa, when I want to manipulate them into getting what I want as the, as the mother archetype. Um, it's, that's why these things are kind of endlessly fascinating because, and, and the reason why, the reason why I will judge a 19 year old MILF is because, 
Um, I've had a lot of time to think about these things um, and kind of and, and process them. <laughs> a lot of time playing mommy, a lot of years. <laughs> so, um, and, 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 and I think when people come to me for, for, for that, um, they can kind of see that I've, I really get it. Like I understand it and I do. Um, so, so that, that, um, that adds to kind of the, the wonderful layers of, of what it is that, um, that we do and, and gets me thinking about, um, about work in a different way. So it does, it does actually affect me. It's just kind of a, it's not like a direct, you know, um, a direct application, like a direct way. Um, and then let's see, what was the other thing that you were asking about? More about mommies and then I'll bring Okay. Up <laughs> I've already forgotten. Um, I was just talking, we are talking about discrimination and like the, the, um, the reasons and, um, kind of understanding, trying to understand, um, I think discrimination right, by um, big businesses about risk though, about it being like not wanting to be associated with trafficking, not wanting to be associated with money laundering. But I really, I, there is no evidence that, and like chargebacks, I think is like a big reason mm -hmm. um, for payment processors, which there's no evidence um, of that I've, I've found. But I'm I not think, surprised. Yeah. I think one thing that was really interesting, what you're talking about is you're talking about the impact of stigma as well as how like external social forces of stigma and like being like, am I deserving of a bank account? Like, is this even a business become like internalized and like part of our own mental schemas because right. of the way that we have to like face these barriers and interact with these, with these barriers, which I think is like one of the, a really devastating part of stigma. Um, I used to teach classes at the teaching hospitals in New York on stigma and working with, with sex workers and like how to provide sex worker affirming care. And a large like part of the module was talking about stigma and internalized stigma and like what um, healthcare professionals can do to not like uh, continue that cycle and to provide affirming care with like free from stigma. So it's something I think about a lot and all of the ways that the barriers that we face kind of like reinforce those stigmas and then they become internalized into like how we think of and conceptualize ourselves and then mm -hmm. our own structures of hierarchy and like the structures of hierarchy and like well it's like well I'm not doing doing that and I'm doing this and so th is this a business and I feel like it it's like all of these social forces coming to like both separate us as well as making us feel shitty about right, exactly everyone yeah. deserves access to like banking should be a given banking and healthcare should be things that are just like freely available to everyone and I feel like there's so much about sex work that like people who are not doing this work are like, oh, this is a given. Like, it's a given that when I search your name on Twitter, I will find you. Mm -hmm. And like, haven't even had to conceptualize the fact that most of like myself and my colleagues aren't searchable on social media, that like social media is a disposable asset to so many of us because the accounts just get totally like obliterated or that like, Yes. Our bank accounts will just like have to constantly be shifting. And it's so much more labor yeah. to have to navigate in that like disappearing infrastructure. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. I mean, trying to, <clears throat> trying to understand it is one thing. Um, and then dealing with it is another thing. Um, and, and like trying not to internalize, um, you know, feelings of like, you know, the, the, the self-worth part kind of hits me, um, when these things come up, um, you know, like I said, I, I try to, um, understand it from their point of view, but ultimately they're wrong. Um, so I, you know, it, 
um, as much as I can understand it from um, a different point of view, it's like um, there's still there's still the the question of like you still we have to live with it and and the issues of what's right and wrong, um, and that gets me much more. It's yeah, you know the 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 dealing with um, the day-to-day aspects, um, the, you know, going back to the, um, questions of when, uh, at the beginning, when people reach out to me and they're like, um, can I, you know, can I do this? I would love to do this. And, and you're like, yeah, you could, (laughs) um, but you might not want to, you, how you don't have all the information. She will travel. (laughs) <laughs> you want to be able to cross borders without being stopped. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want to? Do you want to be shut inside a room with with strange men while they look at your phone? <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. It's like there's um, people want to reward, but none of the. Of course, the, the risk is like is hidden from view Mm -hmm. when it's and there's this this job what's that when it's not seen as work it's just seen as being like right back to the beginning of being like hot and mean on the internet it's not seen as work you just exist and get paid i feel like it erases not not that there's anything wrong with this marketing like it's genius marketing when it works it's like flawless it's beautiful no notes but like i do think Part of its intention is to erase the fact that it's labor. And then I think these people, this false impression that it's not like, if it's not directly criminalized, it's not like related to criminalized labor and like under the umbrella of like a broader category of criminalized labor and that there's not these like stigma and barriers that are associated with it. Yeah. I trying to, um, you know, trying to explain all, all of these things is, oh man, it's exhausting. It's, um, and then, and then just living with it. Um, I, I wish it were as simple as just fuck you, pay me. Oh, it'd be so nice. It's like nothing is not on that app. Cause I don't have that one. So we're actually <laughs> going to use this one and we can go to like a third party because they have that app so that will get the money to me yeah man the the kind yeah man the kinds of it's so funny to think about like like um like through the internet it's just it's there's so many barriers to entry it's like barriers to do anything it's not even barriers or entry of entry is actually not it's i think it's fairly low um but like <laughs> it's so funny to think about all the logistics of getting paid no <laughs> other like you know that that's also something i think about too which is which is like removing the barriers of payment is so it makes it so difficult. Do you ever um, think about how much more money you'd make if they're absolutely? Well, oh my god, I do math about it, and then I get really upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like absolutely. Um, I wonder how much more I would make, um, like if if that barrier weren't there, and it's just literally like, you know, as simple as you just have this big green button and. Anytime someone wants to, yeah. someone wants to pay you, they just push that button and it's like automatic that comes shit. out of your account. Ooh. Oh, that's the fantasy that I'm going to, I'm going to request a custom for you of like, <laughs> that's a good, like with no financial barrier. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. So it's what it's going to look like you have, it's going to be this big, this button, it's going to be nice and green, right? It has a dollar sign on it. <laughs> And, and and it's like every time you someone wants to pay you, they can just go and punch that button, and and you're just rained upon by, by cash, dollar bills. I love it. And it's Benjamins fee as everyone else. I feel like that's like the easiest one of the one of the biggest 
things that I think of as a form of financial discrimination is that we're like forced into using these third party sites that take like a 40% cut of our income. Like that's the mm-hmm. quick that I do of like, if I could just use the like three to 7% that's average for Stripe for all of my transactions. Yep. I'd, I'd make a lot more money. Yep. Yeah, I'm, um, it is one of those things that, um, the, the percentages that it's not the way that these things have been a lot. So many people don't, don't know about these percentages and it's, it's devastating. It sucks. Um, that, um, all clip sites take 40% of your, um, your income. So anytime someone buys a $10 $10 video, you get $6. <clears throat> Anytime someone wants to pay you directly, like they just want to pay you money for whatever the reason is. It's um, on the lowest side I have ever seen. It's 10%. Before taxes. Oh yeah. This is before I- taxes. This is nothing to do with taxes, which I pay religiously. <laughs> um, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> Yeah. Um, this is all before taxes and it's, yeah, it's devastating. It's like the, all the, you know, it's, it's 20 to 30% on average. If someone just wants to pay you money for whatever reason that they want to pay you. Um, and then on the low side, it's 10%. Um, so, you know, if, if you imagine getting paid, you know, you're, you're working at a coffee shop and on top of, the taxes that gets deducted from your paycheck is another 20 to 30 percent that just comes straight out for literally no reason <laughs> for being a barista. Um, you know, that's that's what it's like for us. Um, and that's the that does really. Yeah, that's the sucky part um, where where you're like, I could be twice as rich right now. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot Ooh. of money. Well, I feel like I could chat with you forever. <laughs> so many of these things, but maybe should, I feel like we should end on like a happier note, like on that big green okay. button and like our okay. utopia of yeah. what it could look like. I guess I would love to know like what what you would be like most interested in either like manifesting what like kind of relationship you'd be like really excited to cultivate with a client or a submissive or like what type of content have you been like super eager to make? Mm, okay. Hmm. I, I would manifest, um, a, I, I want to say, I want to manifest like two or three extremely wealthy, kinky, um, kind of erudite, (laughs) is that the right word? Um, kind of people who basically it's not that I, I am actually not the type of person who, um, likes the concept of being paid to do nothing. I actually really want to work for the money that I'm given. (laughs) I, I want, um, and, and I really like to, give back. I'm extremely giving. So, you know, I want, um, like a two or three people who are, who are, who want that kind of deeper relationship with me where we can really explore, um, all the different, oh, the, the, whether it's just, it could just be like the one thing and like, and like truly get deeper into that one thing, or it could be, whatever the things that you've never thought of have always wanted to, to do or, or explore with someone, um, that is a goal for sure. And I, I think I've been cultivating that kind of feeling for a while. And then, um, and I think it's possible. I think it's none of these things are, they're not impossible goals. Um, and then let's see, I want to write a screenplay. Um, I want to write some short stories um, that kind of incorporate, you know, um, 
some deep level, like some pretty bad trauma from the past, but also then kind of spits you on the out on the other side of like life is possible after you've had, you know, um, what to do with our trauma, you know? Um, and, um, yeah, I don't know. Content wise, I think I would, I think I would like to get into some really weird kinky shit. Um, (laughs) I, (laughs) I'm at a point where I can kind of relax into, um, my, in, into, into playing with some things that I, I've never really had time or had the courage to do that, um, I think would just be fun and playful and can be done in this format of like, you know, five to 15 minutes and like really, really kind of delve into it. That isn't like the general, like jerk off, uh, you know, like jerk off instruction, blah, eat your cum, blah. Like it's some so bored with. <laughs> it does get bored. Uh, yeah. It's just, it's kind of the same thing. And as much as I like all of that, I do like it. Um, as much as I like all of that stuff, you know, um, kind of like the weirder the better you know at this point I like that I feel like it's so true too it's like when I get like those like specific customs those are always the ones that do the best and like because there is that like specificity and that like that person that I'm channeling and I I'm also like you in that like I just want to go deeper with people and like have that Mm -hmm. like see how deep that can go I feel like one of my goals is to be gifted property. I have like this very erotic fantasy for me, someone just like showing me a house and it being my dream house and being like, here are the keys. And just like, that is my, my Hot. number one go-to jerk off fantasy <laughs> <laughs> and that I would like to manifest. But I, I feel like there's so much space to like go to like really go deeper. And I love DS as like, kind of like an architect or like a structure for pursuing that depth and like having like the tether of the dom to be able to like plumb the depths mm-hmm. of like what what there is and like what you want to like ex- excavate exercise like what you want to keep and like doing that like deep personal work and I I like what you said about doing the work I like both like want to get paid to like do nothing <laughs> like be hot and do nothing sounds amazing like I am I am a low spoons dom. Like I'm like, if like, I I love using my like shock collar and just like behavior modification tools. So you're just like always good. But there is something I really love about like world building and ritual building and Mm -hmm. like putting in like that intentional time together to figure out like what needs to be done, like what, what you can keep, what needs to be like gotten rid of and like, how I can like mold you. Like I'm an artist. I would like, I want to like be able to do my art with your psyche. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, not everything has to be fucking highbrow. (laughs) The way I see it, it, things can be highbrow and fucking dirty lowbrow too. Uh, You can, you can have like high concept, you know, I want the, I want the one guy um, or lady, honestly, there are not enough um, clients who are um, femme um, who come to me and like, but um, more male clients. I'm just putting this out there. I accidentally branded too queer and <laughs> I feel like I like limited myself. I love my queer clients. Do not get me wrong. But it, uh, the percentage of people who see me who are not cis men is striking, and I'm oh. I'm like really shocked by it. Oh yeah, all I think. <laughs> I think all of mine are are totally cis head men. I, I think. think right now because I well I also I like say yes to certain things, so I think that I I skew my sure. Situation. I'd say like maybe thirty percent of my regulars are cis men right now, and wow, I, it's very bizarre. Wow. Oh, here's a yeah. Here's a call out to cis <laughs> cis cis head <laughs> men. I mean, you guys have been getting such a bashing, and the thing is. I actually, you know, I really love, I, there's nothing wrong with a, with like, just like a curious, you know, white dude, (laughs) 
no just just not an issue i love that um, three curious wealthy white dudes <laughs> yeah. great um yeah i i the the highbrow lowbrow thing you know it's like I want I want one one guy who is just extremely intelligent and wants to talk about all the different concepts and philosophize and blah 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 and then I want the other guy to like come in kiss my feet lay a bunch of cash at my at my door and be like I'm out I have other things I got to do and uh, like great I and he's like I never really liked you that much but here's your money <laughs> Okay with that. You want to like mild humiliation from them. <laughs> Very wealthy pins up. <laughs> like I'm actually too busy to do other research to find other doms. Your SEO was good enough for me. Here's your cash, mistress. <laughs> that would just I mean that would just free me up to do so many that would free me up to be more creative in like the true kind of degradation and humiliation that I know that I was bred for. <laughs> like, I could truly live up to my potential. I, I feel you on this. I feel like I like, had an arc where like, I was, I got the name blunt because I was told I had the subtlety of a metaphoric sledgehammer is where I Aww. acquired my name. Love and, like, that. Um, and I had to learn to, uh, wield my sledgehammer ethically and i feel like i'm mm -hmm. like moving into my okay i know how to use this ethically so like let's fuck some stuff up and like go yes. deeper and like for what i was made for like what i like unlearned and now i yes. can use more intentionally um i don't know i just i feel like I have gone so deep in my ds relationships and that is like where i truly find joy is when people like really mm. let me in i'm working on a project right now which I, I haven't really talked about i don't know how much i want to talk about it but i am i am using my submissives labor and expertise and like creativity to create something and using my like manipulative and exploitative skill set to extract from them as the artistic process and i'm just oh. like super excited about this i feel like i've been like continually extracted from as the sex worker and it's been really cathartic to like create this structure where my submissives are just like this hive mind producing and creating for me and like I just get to like extract and extract and take and take and it's just it's been awesome really it. it's fulfilling. <laughs> we'll talk about this offline <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss this we're gonna we're gonna talk about this <laughs> okay well thank you so much for chatting with me this was much too much fun Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and the wonderful conversation.